Once a clipping mask has been created, the layers remain fully and independently editable. These examples show different ways clipping masks can be used in conjunction with both independent layer editing and base layer editing, which applies to all clipped layers. And so you can see our travel example is still included. But you don't have to use text. And so in the examples on the right and left-hand side, you can see that I have images that I have put inside shapes. And so if you didn't want to put text for whatever reason, you could use shapes. You could create custom shapes or you could create... Um, um, uh, what, well, technically they're called custom shapes where they use the ones that are available inside of Photoshop or you create them on your own. But you could create your own shapes from scratch or you could use um, shapes that are built into to Photoshop that might work for your liking. And so I didn't create either of these shapes, I just pulled them from Photoshop. And when I bounce over there I'll show you, show you how to do that. And then you could also uh, modify all of the images independently inside the picture. And so if you look at my snowflake, um, I have a purple background that has a clipping mask of the shape of a snowflake. But in this example, it was a full color image and it was summertime, but I wanted it to look like it was winter. And if you look closely, it's mountains. It might not be coming across completely on the video. But I went to the layer for the mountains and I made it blue so that it looks like it's winter. And so now I have kind of a winter scene. You can also modify the base layer, which is what I did for the Germany example. And so for Germany, I have all these pictures of German cities, and I didn't like exactly how it looked. And so I started applying layer effects and um, adjustment layers and things specifically to the, the base layer. And when you apply them to the base layer, they affect all of the images that are clipped inside the mask. And so here's an example of what I did specifically for that Germany example. I have layers 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 that have been clipped down into the word Germany. And then in, in the Germany layer or the base layer, I applied layer effects by hitting this FX button at the bottom of the layers panel. And then I applied a bevel and emboss, which gave it the structured look. I applied a stroke, which is like the dark line. I want to say black, but it's dark, it's dark green. The dark green line along the outside, and I applied an outer glow. In addition to that, I made the entire page look green by adding a color fill to the top or above the clipping mask so that all the layers above all the way down to the text now have a green tint to them. I want to jump over to Photoshop and show you how I created the image with the snowflake or a custom shape. And so I'll just open a random image that we used for the previous activity. This one looks good. And um, I want to apply a clipping mask to this. And so you need to set up your file and you need to get the structure right before you even create the clipping mask. And so one of the things I always like to do is I'll duplicate the background layer. I'm going to choose Command J, which is just one way to duplicate something in Photoshop. And then turn off the background layer. That's my backup. If for some reason I destroy layer one, I can always get back to the background. Now, to create the clipping mask, I need to create a base layer. And in the previous examples, I use the type tool and I clicked or I clicked and dragged to make a box, which is paragraph type. And I typed a word, travel or, excuse me, travel or Germany in the example. But for this activity, I don't want to use text. I want to use a shape. And so if you look at your tools panel, there are different shapes that you can select. I'm going to select the one that kind of looks like a, a lopsided star or an amoeba from your science class. And when you select that, um, you have to be aware of what the tool is. It's the custom shape tool. And so right now, if I was to click and drag, it would make a shape, but it would make whatever the last shape that I have selected is. And it's kind of funky and hard to see. And it's basically a texture shape, and I don't want that. But once you have the shape selected, you can come to your options bar at the top of the screen, and there's a shape drop down. And from that drop down, you can choose different shapes. And if you're going to create a clipping mask, you want it to have a lot of white, right? Because white we get to keep, black disappears. We've learned that for, for many things that we've done in our Photoshop class. And so I maybe don't want to do the light bulb here. If I do the light bulb and I click and drag, when I go to make my clipping mask, it is only, let me make it really quick so you can see it. It is only going to show me the artwork inside the little um, area around the outside of the light bulb. And so when I'm trying to choose a custom shape here, I'll choose maybe the butterfly or the leaf. Let's do the leaf. 
And so it has a lot of solid, big, broad areas of white, which will give me a lot of area to show the picture in. And so now when I click and drag to make the snowflake, not the snowflake, the leaf, I can position it on my screen how I would like it to be. Make sure that it is the base layer, so it's underneath the layer that's going to be clipped. Select the layer or layers to be clipped, in this case it's just one, and then you can either choose the layer menu and create clipping mask or command option G or control alt G on a PC and it will automatically clip to the layer below and then now you have your building inside the leaf and you could do all the same things that we did for the other example so if we hit the FX button we can add a bevel and an emboss you can do a color overlay which is how I change the color uh, maybe it's a hue overlay I don't like that we'll do a color overlay you can change the color maybe we're pretending this is Canadian right well, it's probably not the right maple leaf for that but maybe we're doing Canada and so we want it to be very red because Canada that's their color and you can do whatever you want to do inside there whatever you do to the base layer which is shape one in our example will apply to the, the layers that have been clipped but now you could also edit layer one and so I don't like that the train station is off-center and so if I grab my move tool and I select layer one, we can move the picture inside the clipping mask and position it where we want it to go. And so when I position this with the DB, um, which is giving it away that it's not uh, Canadian, that's a German train company. Um, when I position the DB in the center of the top of the leaf, I can make sure that I don't see anything hanging off out of the outside. And that's where I will, will, uh, will leave it. Above and beyond that, you could apply a filter. Maybe you want to apply a filter to that layer and change the texture of it. And so with layer one selected, if we choose filter and maybe filter gallery, you can, I don't know, let's do watercolor. You can apply watercolor filter and then that filter will flow through to your clipping mask. Okay, so I want you to try to create your second clipping mask now, but this time I want you to use a shape instead of text, and I want you to try to apply layer effects to the base layer and do some sort of modification to the layer or layers that are being clipped. Once you're done and you feel comfortable, you can move on to our next video.